be looking at the allegation made by the uh, former uh, Niger Delta activist Asari Dokubo as regards to the oil theft going on, on in the Niger Delta. And joining me virtually to discuss this program is the lead director of Center for Social Justice, Eze Unyepere. He joins me virtually now. Good, uh, good morning to you, sir, and thank you so much for joining me on the program. My pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Okay, sir. Now, um, I'm sure you've been following this uh, development, especially in the area of oil theft, as alleged by Asari Dokubo, um, the former Niger Delta activist, where he actually made claims, uh, alleging that uh, Nigerian military, they are actually involved in the oil theft going on in the Niger Delta, with such development in the oil sector, sir, where uh, cases of oil theft have been alleged against the highly placed in Nigeria, even in government. What is likely to become of that sector since the country depends so much on the sector for survival? Well, let's understand it this way that Asari Dokobo is not saying something new or strange. Okay. The NAITI disclosed in a December 2022 statement that about 619 million barrels of crude oil mm. valued at $46.6 .6 billion. Or if you are to project it in Naira at over $20 trillion, mm. have been stolen in the last 12 years. And this is averaging about 1.5 trillion Naira annually, lost to oil theft. Mm. If we are to bring this sum into account through the books of NNPC, of course, it will increase the amount that remitting to the federation account for sharing by the three pairs of government. Mm -hmm. Now, if you also look at a report from the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, mm -hmm. you discover that uh, uh, around April we produce less than 1 million barrels a day. And currently we are doing about 1.2, 1.3, as against 1.68 million barrels a day, which is mm -hmm. what is approved for us in the budget and the open quota. So essentially, it is not in new. And this crude oil is not being stolen by spirits. It is being stolen by human beings. The other day, it was on television, everybody saw the pipes, the smaller pipes that we are linked to a major trunk pipe, and they said it's been there for years. Yes, we have uh, the army, we have the navy, we have the police, we have the NCDC, we have the respective task forces, we have MIMASA. And so with all this, it is not news. And of course, NMP also employs local contractors. And recently, Tompona has been given a pipeline protection contract. Mm. So it's not news that those people whose function and duty it is to secure their places, if they were not there in it, this quantum of crude oil test wouldn't have been happening. If you are given an assignment, you have to do broadcasting from your station. Yeah. If you are not there now, mm. nobody, this discussion will not be going on. Mm. So if you are a security man and you have to secure things in a compound, and when in the morning they come, those things have been stolen, and you are being asked, they are not just things that somebody can put in his pocket and run. Okay? Mm. These are materials that need a vehicle to load. The key gate is locked. You have the key. You said you were not sleeping, and in the morning, two trailer loads of materials have been loaded and escaped from the compound. What exactly will be? What exactly will you plead? You did not know, or you want to intimidate people when they're asking you questions, what were you doing and when they came left. So it's no news. Mm -hmm. It's a very known fact, notorious fact that Nigerians know, that those who are in charge of securing this oil, are either those still in it or cognizing with the thieves. So mm. it's not in me and there is. And it's an unfortunate thing because we are losing a lot of money, mm. which could have gone to the three tiers of government. We are losing a lot of resources, which we could have used for national development. So it's a very unfortunate scenario. Okay, so now uh, tell us, uh, with this uh, situation now, it appears that the state actors have failed, you know, in securing the pipelines. Now, is it right for non-state actors to be handed over the security of oil installations in the country? 
I cannot say definitely yes, it is right or no, it is wrong. But I think that all strategies should be deployed to ensure the security of our crude oil and oil pipelines. Yes, we could have a mix of uh, official security agents as well as uh, private uh, stakeholders. But what I think going forward is that it depends on who is on top. If I give you an assignment as an army commander mm. and tell you what to do, if you fail in the performance of that task, it shouldn't be business as usual. You should be held accountable. You should be prosecuted. You should be removed from that position. You should even possibly be caught martial for failing in the discharge of your duty. So that whoever is coming next, we have seen what happened to the previous actor and then make sure he takes his job more seriously. Well, like you can see from the Tompolo instance, this is a local, he knows the creeks, mm. he knows all the straightforward rules and what we used to call up and wave. So mm. there is nothing wrong in letting him assist so that uh, we can, uh, you know, secure the entire stretch of the pipelines and our crude oil production and exports. Mm. You know why you mentioned the issue of, uh, you know, the person at the top? One be wondering, you remember last year when uh, some uh, delegation led by uh, the chief of the defense staff, Lucky Rabo, yeah. you know, the, the, yeah. uh, he actually led the delegation to the creeks, you know, to look at how things are done there. And they even went ahead to burn a particular vessel. If you remember, you know, they said yeah. it was used for, you know, movement of uh, oil and the rest of them illegally. But we didn't see much impact as regards to that investigation. Up to this moment, I don't think anybody has been arrested or prosecuted. Can we really make headway with such development? If you recall, it wasn't even the chief of army staff or any official that discovered that pipeline. It was a discovery from the Tompolo contract. Mm. So it was the civilians who were making the discovery and calling the attention of the authorities to come and see. I perfectly agree with you that the whole thing looks a little bit childish. How do you see a vessel that was used in bunkering, illegal stealing of crude oil? Instead of securing it, first of all, you take away those crude oil, you don't need to point it. Is that crude oil you use, you put it to use, and that vessel should have been part of the evidence to be tendered in a court of law. Maybe the court can have a visit to the locals in court to see the ship. And thereafter, what stops us from selling the ship to put money into the treasury or using it officially to do some work? Let it be our own game. Just like when you see the, the property of a drug trafficker, you don't burn their houses. Mm. If it's the process of a crime, you cannot make use of it for the public, uh, for the public uh, treasury. Otherwise, you sell it and put the money in the treasury. So I agree with you. To the extent that nobody is being prosecuted is part of the reason why this allegation can be made. How do you arrest a thief and let him go? So this allegation being made, maybe it's a, a combination of facts, because if Nigerians have had that 50, 60 people have been prosecuted, 30 have gone to jail, and there has been attempts to recover so much money from them, you took away a ship that has 5, 10 million worth of crude oil, the money is recovered, put into the treasury, who believe them that they're serious, but it doesn't show any sign of seriousness from the security authorities. Mm. You know, we are really looking at uh, the best solution to address this. Uh, so people are of the opinion that, uh, in fact, they were asking question, if uh, the issue of Petroleum Industry Act that we have in place now, if it can actually help, you know, to address this issue, especially where it affects the locals, you know, taking responsibility of their environment these things happen at the creeks and some people are staying there uh are they not supposed to be aware in case they see anything they should at lot you know uh maybe security agencies so i think we have to understand it in the proper context okay this is oil and gas being taken from their land and in those areas where this oil and gas is being taken away the oil and gas belongs to the federal government as the law states mm. and in most of these communities are underdeveloped they don't have drinking water no access roads 
health facilities and educational facilities. And the people are generally poor. So what steps do they have for you to be expecting them to quickly report to you who has been taking their oil and gas so that you can continue taking and using it to build Lagos and Abuja? And then tomorrow somebody will claim, like uh, the current president and his party claim, that uh, they built Lagos and that other people are lazy. The bulk of the money used in building infrastructure in Lagos was federal money. And the bulk of the money came from the Greeks. So what step do they have? What are they benefiting for you to be expecting them to quickly rush to you to report? So this is the challenge. Mm -hmm. I hope with the full implementation of the PIA, the host funds, the community projects, mm -hmm. and then, you know, revitalizing NDDC and the Ministry of Niger Delta, if these things are done and the people begin to see a step, they begin to see direct benefits, then it will be difficult for you to come and steal uh, petroleum products under their nose. But if they don't have any stake, they are suffering. What's their business mm. with reporting? I remember uh, during the campaigns, uh, the uh, Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, actually alleged too, uh, it's not only the military that has a hand in what is happening in terms of oil stealing in Niger Delta. There are some people in government too are involved what should the president who happens to be the commander in chief of the armed forces what should he be doing okay let's uh, take it that the previous government they've gone is he supposed to look into the books and see you know those areas that it's possible that some government officials actually partook in what is happening in the niger delta nigeria is virtually cast out so the president has every obligation to look back as to what has happened, who is responsible for what happened, whether that person can be brought to apologize to Nigerians, and then some level of compensation for, uh, to the Treasury for the corrupt action. Not just looking back, but even if you, the president succeeds in saying, from my regime onwards, let bygone be the bygone. Whatever may have happened in the past, let's say from now onwards, we'll make sure nobody steals a drop. And it is going to be very easy to review what has happened and bring people to book. Now, let me explain to you. The ships which they use to smuggle this crude, crude oil, which they used to see, these are not small crafts that can pass unnoticed. And from the last time we had, some of them were even looking at the official loading point. And they will leave Nigerian waters, escape the Air Force, escape the Navy, escape Nimasa, and one of them was caught either in Gabon or one other West African country. They say, where did you take this crew from? And you now say, oh, you came from Nigeria. And everybody was shocked when the ship was escorted back to Nigeria. So it is going to be very easy if you look into the books and interview relevant people to catch the thieves, prosecute them, Punish them as an example, deterrence. Because if you know that the person who was there before who did something wrong mm. is in jail, is not coming back out of in the next 20 years, all the property is stolen has been confiscated, and he and his family have been put to shame, you will think twice before you repeat that thing he did. But if it's like Gary Go, oh, he's not 20 billion, you can target to steal 40 billion. And since nothing will happen, Nobody will be deterred from continuing to do it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my thinking. I, I'm also thinking that uh, the issue of uh, these non-state actors uh, about, you know, uh, being given the security of oil installations. Don't forget that the likes of uh, Tom Polo, even the man that made the allegation, uh, Asari Dokubo, all of them were in the creeks at some point, you know, fighting against government in form of militancy. You know, now you are handing them over the issue of uh, securing the oil installations. How credible are they to, you know, perform this particular responsibility? Yes, they were fighting. They were not rebels without a cause. They were saying, improve the living standards and the environment of my people. So they were not rebels without a cause. Mm -hmm. And the government engaged them and saw that they have a cause, that they were not fighting for the sake of it. And of course, there was amnesty program and then capacity building and training for some of the militants. So the government that took that decision must have seen something, must have seen the legitimacy of their cause. Mm -hmm. So yes, they were fighting before. 
Now they stop fighting and uh, drop their arms, but they still have the capacity because they know the nooks and crannies of the streets. Mm. I don't see anything wrong in asking them to help, but it shouldn't be them alone. It shouldn't be like Tompolo or Asali take over the territory. While you ask them to assist to get to the every nook and cranny, the Navy, the Air Force, the Armed Forces, the soldiers, the police, civil defense, everybody should still be doing the, their own duty. So that in the event anybody wants to misbehave, in the event the, the civilians want to join to sabotage, mm -hmm. they could be arrested. <laughs> and in the event the security agencies are the ones doing it, and then the civilians can blow the whistle so that the authorities can come and pick them up. So it should be a mixture of both hands. It shouldn't be to say, oh, get out for us, mm -hmm. where the security agencies authorized by government. What were you doing all along when this theft was going on? If you were doing a work as an authorized security agency, we wouldn't have had the need to bring the civilian. Okay, Mr. Ezeonyepere, before you uh, leave, I, I would like to also get your opinion as regards to the issue of uh, subsidy. Uh, you know, uh, up to this moment, we are yet to see those palliatives uh, promised by the president, President Bola Tinubu, up to this moment. And if you recall, I, I think uh, yesterday, the NLC, they are beginning to threaten strike action if nothing is done. Uh, they called off their strike their intention, uh, their intended uh, uh, strike moves, you know. But up to this moment, nothing has been done. What do you think about this issue of oil subsidy removal? I am all for the removal of oil subsidy. But I have a challenge with the process through which uh, President Bola Metinibu removed it. It's not a show that he announced on the parade ground of inauguration. Mm. So that people will start clapping for you. Subsidy was paid for by the federal government up to the end of June. So he was sworn in on the 29th. So he had one month to plan to negotiate with organized labor, organized private sector, professionals, women's groups on, yes, we are removing this. How do we, you know, alleviate the suffering that will come? So he did the announcement before working out the what needs to be done. Mm. And up till now, that thing hasn't been worked out. But if you ask me, I will make a number of recommendations. You can see with the price of petroleum products at in excess of 500 Naira, mm. we need to reduce transport costs. And we can consider the introduction and local protection of buses and vehicles that are powered by compressed natural gas, which you understand is still about 100 and something which will reduce the price of transportation to the levels it was before the subsidy was removed. I also think both the federal and state government need to increase the minimum wage. 30,000 naira a month is a joke. It can't even pay for the basic needs. So it shouldn't be less than 100,000 a month for public sector workers. And then in matters of health, I need them to reject the guidelines for the utilization of the basic health care provision fund mm. so that not less than 85 percent of that fund is dedicated to survey delivery on basic minimum package for the poorest of the poor so we have traversed transportation we've talked about the minimum wage and we talked about improving access to basic health care this is not all but a few of the things that i can immediately come to mind. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a panel, the report of the Presidential Advisory Council, they talked about tax relief for the low-income workers for about a year, mm -hmm. at least to relieve them of the duty of paying tax on the media money that they're earning. So there are a number of ways beyond even thinking of sharing money, because I always support sharing money, mm -hmm. like they were doing the previous government, mm -hmm. so that it will be something that will be tangible, that will improve the lives of the people, rather than sharing 5,000 to somebody. What can 5,000 buy? Mm. If even more than 5,000, uh, will he be able to even pay for a pot of soup for a family of four? Mm. Yeah, and the husband, six of them for two days. So he can't even do that. So let's have sustainable interventions that can improve the livelihoods of the people. The lead director of Center for Social Justice, Mr. Eze Onyepere, thank you so much for speaking with us on the platform this morning. Thank you.
Thank you, my pleasure.